friends, kali ini editorial goes to Gia. Ciao ladies, welcome to Gia. I'm Tommaso, I'm the chef in here. Have you seen something in the menu? Yes. Would you like to cook with me? I'm trying to come in the kitchen. Of course. Of course. Let's go. Okay. What would you like to cook? Tell me, what do you like about Italian cuisine? We can cook actually whatever you want, you know, if you want to cook pizza, you want to try a dessert, <laughs> you want to try and make some pasta, what do you feel? Pizza, No, pizza, lama. Okay, okay. Yeah? Pizza. Right, we make one pizza and one pasta, okay, just see, no? Carbonara. Carbonara. We start. <laughs> Let's put uh, take one uh, the big spoon please. Take the big one, yes. And from here put some more water into here. We cook our pasta here. Some Just like that. Take oh. some water. <laughs> yeah, and then fill some more water in here. That's the boiler now we use for the pasta. But now since we have to make only one portion, it's faster if we add uh, some water in here and we put on the fire. So when this one is boiling, we cook our pasta in there. Cool. To accelerate, we close so the water is boiling fast. Okay. In here we prepare the sauce for the carbonara. The carbonara we have to use pork bacon. So fire on. We add some bacon. Mm -hmm. Then we add some oil, extra virgin. Not too much because the bacon also is full of oil. And then you have to wait until the bacon, you know, start to become slightly crispy. Not too much, but slightly crispy. When it start to become slightly crispy, we add the one spoon of uh, vegetable broth. And we stop the cooking for the bacon until the pasta is coming. Beside this, we prepare the egg. See the bacon, no? Start to get uh, hot, this okay? So what we do, we reduce the heat. We don't want to make it uh, still on, but the small one. Otherwise, we'll burn. Instead, we, we gently, we want them gently become crispy. What we can add on the carbonara is the black pepper. Yeah, a lot of black pepper. And you put inside the oil, so the oil as well is taking the, the flavor. It's like toasting some spices, no? So the oil itself also can take the flavor of the black pepper. For uh, one portion of carbonara, we use one egg whole, mm -hmm. and one, we just use the yolk. Done. To make it more yellowish also. Then uh, we squeeze We whisk and we add, please help me with a little bit of salt in front of you. Add a pinch of salt inside, yes. A pinch? A pinch of salt in here, yeah. More? Don't be shy, more. <laughs> a bit more, <laughs> yes. Enough? Enough. Okay. <laughs> and we set aside until the pasta is ready. The bacon, you see, start to be cooking, yeah? Slowly, slowly, right? We don't really need to move that much. Now that the pasta, water, right, is already boiling, it's time to put the pasta in there. Uh, in Italy, we do put some water, sorry, some salt in the water when we cook the pasta. And the pasta, the spaghetti in this case, for example, doesn't have to be broken. Eh? I see a lot of people that sometimes uh, are yeah, breaking yeah, the spaghetti yeah, yeah, in the yeah. middle. That's so wrong. Yeah? Pasta has to be like this. All going inside. And make sure the fire is not too high, otherwise the pasta will get burned. Okay. And the, the water is already hot, so soon all the spaghetti will go inside. Yeah. You see our bacon getting you know crispier, right? But not burned, right? Yeah. That's the secret for a good carbonara. The fat from the bacon. Since this one is already almost crispy, but I don't want to burn, I'm adding a spoon of water or stock. Please, help me with that. 
On the left you have, uh, yes, that one. That one is vegetable stuff. Not really full, yeah? Like half of the spoon. Okay. Put it here? Yes, please. Perfect. And then we wait for the pasta to be ready. So we can turn off the fire. Just make sure that the pasta starts to you know, cook properly. So now we have to wait until the pasta is done. The pasta is almost ready. Mm -hmm. So what we do... What we do is just moving this pasta here. from here to the sauce that contains some stock as well. So the pasta can finish cooking here yeah. and releasing some of the natural starch. Yeah. Right? Please, mix gently, yeah? slowly and gently. Add some more water for her, please. Water, water. <laughs> A little bit, not too okay. much. Yes, that's perfect. Put inside, mm. all perfect. Keep on, uh, you know, mixing. Exactly, exactly like that. And when the pasta is almost uh, dry, mm -hmm. like there is not too much water, water, water anymore, anymore. Mm -hmm. we remove from the heat and we add the cheese, and uh, the Fake. egg. You see, now there is no, no water anymore. Water. So yeah. we remove from the fire. Please turn off the fire. Turn off again. Okay. Then we move in here. You can come, guys. And what we do, since the sauté is still very hot, we add the parmigiano and the pecorino, because in the original recipe of carbinara, you use two kinds of cheese. Mm -hmm. Three quarter of parmigiano. One quarter of pecorino because pecorino is very salty. And the egg. When you put the egg, then you have to whisk. Please keep mixing slowly, slowly. No need to fast. You will cook the egg by the heat of the pasta before. It's like pasteurized the egg. You see, it's not liquid anymore, it starts yeah. to be thick. So now it's time for plating. To make a nice plating, we do, you know, keeping the pasta here. You roll inside this. And then you have a nice shape Whoa. for your pasta. Is this one of the most favorite dishes? In Absolutely, the oh, one no. of the best selling of Gia. Our carbonara here in Gia, this one uh, that we have just made is a very classic carbonara. Mm -hmm. Not the one like you find in Italy. In Gia, to make it more uh, unique, we add uh, some pork belly. <gasps> this is uh, Iberico pork belly that we have been slow roasting with a crispy skin. We add some fennel seeds, some salt, you know, some pepper, some classic aroma. And then in Gia, here in Jakarta, we add some of this beautiful, you know, pork belly to this carbonara, just to make it more interesting. Very beautiful. Thank you very much. Okay. Here we are. Wow. And this is a reduction of pork bone that we add on the side a bit. It's done. Spaghetti alla carbonara. <laughs> okay, one pizza. We move there. Dan kita udah 
masak bareng sama Chef Tawaso dan seperti biasa moodnya nggak usah ditanya lagi rasanya gimana karena udah pasti enak banget dia banget ya. Nah sekarang kita mau ngobrol-ngobrol sedikit sama Chef Tomaso. Oke, okay. hi Chef. Ciao guys. Ciao. Jadi what is ciao? Ciao means hi. Means hi. In Italia. Okay. We say ciao. So uh, first I want to ask, how do you find your passion in cooking? I think it's something that comes from the family. Mm-hmm. I I learn from my mother, from my father, also my father. You know, it's a uh, Even if he's a man, he has a big, big passion for mm-hmm. cooking. So I didn't make any culinary school when I was younger. I did a scientific one, and when I finished, I was not really into study anymore. So I left the university and I started working in restaurant as a helper, as a cook helper, and slowly growing until until today. So you never attend any formal school? Any? Oh my God, really? Yeah. Okay, so it all it was all from your parents, from all family. From I get, let's say, from them I got the passion for food, for eating. By myself, you know, I learn and I, be, I, okay. I develop all these skills. It was very that nice. me to become the chef of GF today. Okay, and then next, I want to know what is your comfort food? Hamburger. Hamburger? It's more like American food? I love hamburger. Oh let's say, God. let's Why? say, you know, sandwich. Uh-huh. If you want, let's say sandwich. Maybe it's a reaction of my job when it comes to food. When you say comfort, I really want something comfort, right? Something yes, yes, so yes. easy and bread stuffed with any sort of ham, you know, meat, the cheese as well. So It'll it's hamburger. Yeah. Okay. No wonder hamburger is one of my favorites. I remember since I was a kid, actually. Since I was a kid, I used to go in holiday with my grandma. Mm-hmm. You know before my father and my mother came to holiday because they were working. And uh-huh. with my grandma, we used to go always in this place called Galliano, where they were making hamburger. But in Italy, it's not really common yet. And I remember it was crazy about hamburger. hamburger. And until today, yeah. Until today, I think. Oh, yeah, you know, okay, okay. I still have a big, big crush for it. Okay, how do you, uh, like, input your comfort food to your dish, have you? Not really. In Gia we are doing a, a different kind of food, cannot be considered comfort food, but at the same time, we also, you know, as a chef, we always try to cook something that we like. Yeah. Because it's important when you're cooking something, if you want the result of this dish being good, you need to put your effort, you need yes. to put your soul, you know, on it. And to do that, you need to do something that you like. Yes. So de- definitely, in every in every dish of Gia, there is uh, there is me, there is my you know my passion for food. There There's is you inside my every guy food. is also okay. inside the passion of food, because as a team, you know we develop every dish together. When we create a dish, we don't think that we reach 100% from the beginning, but we need you know the time, mm-hmm. the the experience of all of our team to develop every single dish. And then next, uh, what do you think about Indonesian culinary? Oh, I love Indonesian food, you know. Maybe Padang food. Padang? Yeah, very spicy, sure but after so many years. Yeah, it's pretty strong. You yeah, know, I've been in Indonesia yeah, yeah. for a pretty long time. Huh? 10 years, something more. So I think I. You love Padang? I do. Your favorite one is Padang. Ah, I do. Okay, so oh my god, okay, okay. Perfect. Okay, 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 perfect. What is that one ingredient that you always have in every dish that you make? I would say not in every dish, but definitely the ingredient that I use the most in the kitchen is lemon zest. This uh, this ingredient, not uh, you know, not that expensive, not that uh, unique, uh, but for me, essential. Essential in almost every dish. In almost every dish. In almost every dish. So lemon? Zest. Zest. Zest that? is the, the skin. The, oh, the skin. skin. Yeah, but just the yellow part. Oh. The zest. The outside. Yeah. The yellow part is called the zest. So you, you know, can get it using a peeler. You can use a microplane. Depend what kind of need you you have. But I consider lemon zest one of my most important ingredient in kitchen today. Move to the more personal question. Do you have any best moment in cooking? Like the most memorable one? 
or many when actually. You, maybe when you are still little. Well, I, I do have many actually, but probably one of the most memorable is been here in Indonesia, cooking for the president of the Republic of Italy. When he visited Indonesia, we had the pleasure to host him. Yeah. And we cook for him. So, you know, as Italian, cooking for your president, yes. I guess it's one of the best uh, memories you can get. Besides that, uh, there are many memories. You know, working with great chefs, people that, you know, infuse me with their knowledge, like Chef Fulvio Perangelini or Chef Filippo Lamantia, Chef Davide Oldani. I did also some TV program with them, so yeah, definitely good memories. But above all of this, you know, the president, yeah, yeah, the president is the great best. Memory. Memory. Okay. What, what did you make for him? We prepare a selected uh, menu mm -hmm. because actually the president has a very, very restricted diet. So they send us the list of the dish that the president can have and out of this list we prepare a very nice menu, very Italian, you know, very classic. Okay, okay. Appetizer, pasta, mm -hmm. one main course, one dessert, but very, very classic dish because, you know, the president is a person that almost every day is having lunch or dinner yes. out. Yeah. yeah. So, since he's not that young anymore as well, he needs to follow certain diets. Yes. Right. to don't get uh, any disturbed during his visit here and there he always has to you know talk with people so let's say when they are talking they don't uh, you know they don't have a uh, bad maybe flavor mm -hmm. of you know yeah, yeah, yeah. so you need to maybe avoid using garlic yeah. using onion or using any sort of ingredient that can cause them any difficulties in their relation you know Okay, okay, one last question. Um, how do you usually find your inspiration in cooking? I think today with social medias, you know, like Instagram, yeah. you can get very, very good inspiration if you're following your favorite chefs, if you're following, you know, a particular person. And uh, mostly it's what I do, following them, uh, seeing what they do, you know, what they are cooking, the ingredients, the way they are treating, it really inspires me. But I believe that you know, the best way to be inspired is still travel. Travel, you know, experience, try the food, and uh, learn, learn also from the rest of the world, because even if I'm doing Italian cuisine in here, I do get inspired also by Indonesian cooking, mm -hmm. I do get inspired by Japanese cooking. Yeah. So the most important thing, I guess in every job, but in mine in particular is to love what you're doing and yeah. go around trying, travel, experience, new restaurant, new trend. That's what I do the most. Okay, thank you so much. My pleasure. Yeah. Thank you guys, hope you had a good time. Yes. Thank you to our friends for watching. See you on the next Editorial Ghost. Bye!